As we found out Monday night that Hall of Famer Deacon Jones passed away at age 74, my previous previous bit I did more or less a little bit of an intro talking, you know, about, you know, him and his career aspirations, you know, how he wasn't really high draft pick. But in this segment, I'm going to debate his place in history amongst the greatest pass rushers of all time. I mean, let's put it this way. He was the first real great pass rusher. I mean, there have been other ones who have been really, really damn good since then. And some have even surpassed his career sack total, such as Reggie White and Bruce Smith. But where does Deacon really rank on the list? If I had to bet my life on a guy sacking a quarterback, I'm betting it on Deacon Jones. Because whatever it takes, he's going to get to the quarterback. Whatever it takes. Because he was just nasty. He was mean. I mean, if you heard his sound bites, he said, he said, you know... Put him in the hospital every time he tackle him. Because every time he came over, he was trying to tear the guy's head off. He just had a knack for getting to the quarterback at the right time. Said he could outrun daylight. You don't find too many guys with that kind of confidence and that kind of swagger that play in the defensive front back in those days. If I had to put together a list, though, of pass rushers, there are so many guys you can think of that would that could lay claim to the top spot. You could lay claim to, consensusly, the greatest defensive player of all time, Lawrence Taylor. You could look at the all-time sacker and Bruce Smith. You could look at, considered the greatest defensive lineman of all time in Reggie White, and you can look at Deacon. Those are my big four right now. But if I had to pick one of them right now, that I, I'd i have to place, let's go fourth through one. Fourth, I'm going with Bruce Smith. Because, yes, he was an incredible player. Yes, he was. But, you know, and he had a lot more sacks than anybody. I still think that he's a step behind the other guys. As great as he was, you know, incredibly long career, incredible longevity, Hall of Famer. I would have to put him fourth. I'd bump Lawrence Taylor to third because as great of a player as he was, as an outside linebacker, it was easier to get to the quarterback as an outside linebacker. It was because if you look at, you know, the dynamics of playing outside linebacker in a 3-4 as he did his whole career, I mean, yes, he had the, the three defensive ends, the three defensive linemen eat up the five offensive linemen. And half the time, LT was going up against, you know, a lot, a tight end or a running back or even a fullback whenever he was trying to get the quarterback. So, the best, the, the way, the way to describe it would be to say, you know, he would very oftentimes have the easiest the path of least resistance when going to try to make a sack. But still, when he got to the quarterback, he was going to put him in so much pain. I mean, he and the other members of that Giants defense broke NFL quarterback Joe Theismann's leg on Monday Night Football. I mean, I don't think he had any intent of really hurting him or trying to really kill him, but... You have to match at the time. He was trying to beat the living hell out of him. And he did. I mean, you could see the tremendous power that he had. Whenever he came out to the quarterback, he was going to hit him. I mean, he was just going to beat the living hell out of him every time. And he was so quick, too. I mean, normally when you see an outside linebacker that rush the quarterback, maybe 6'1 or 6'2, he's 6'4, 6'5 his whole career. And he was just as fast as a guy half his height. The ability he had to explode off the line. He could do other things too, but just the way that, you know, he came after the quarterback was spectacular. Number three is Reggie White. I put Reggie White at number two because. You know, as great as he was, he had a few, several seasons where he didn't get a lot of sacks. He had like four or five seasons where he lit up opposing offensive lines. But then he had a bunch of seasons where he was kind of average. Like even when they went to the Super Bowl, he had a few average, that he had an average year that year. I mean, yes, he's had some of the greatest defensive seasons a, pl a defensive player's ever had and the two-time, three-time defensive player of the year. 
you know, I think you have to put him at number two because of the way, you know, that whenever he was playing well, how hard it was to stop him. I mean, he took what players like like other pass rushes were doing, and he took it to a new level. I mean, Doug Williams, a former quarterback for the Redskins, said he when he would get sacked by Reggie, he'd bless you, and then a few plays later, he'd come back and bless you again, as if to say he would just sack you again, because the way he'd get the quarterback, he just he was the complete package. But if I'm putting up together a list of pass rushers, there's only one number one. That's Deacon Jones, because. For the first, for one, he was really the first glamorous pass rusher. He was the first, he, he really, you know, revolutionized the defensive end position because they were more or less, you know, at those days, they are more or less just run stoppers. And I think that number one is, he coined the term for throwing a quarterback for a loss. I mean, if he's that good, I think kind of have to put him at number one for that reason. I mean, he had two seasons where he had a combined 50 sacks. And that's back when they had 14 game seasons. So he's averaging about a sack and a half per game for a two year stretch. You don't get numbers like that anymore. That's just preposterous. I mean, he just was, he was scary. He was frightening, you know. And the thing about Deacon Jones gets lost in the shuffle was, as great of pass rushers as guys like he and Reggie White and Bruce Smith are, he was more of a better, he was a better run stopper than those guys were. He was. He was very, very quick and good at coming off the edge. At hitting, and you know, when the running back was coming his way, he was going to tackle him. I mean, he was very, very good at stopping the run. He could even make a few plays in the passing game if it was close to the line of scrimmage. But his main talent was just sacking the quarterback, and he was... Probably the best he ever played the game at that position, at hitting the quarterback. No other guy I can think of comes as close to being the greatest pass rusher of all time as Deacon Jones. And that's why I list him as the greatest pass rusher in history.